I have here um, a back of a journal cover that um, I'm going to fill up this area with basket weave um, and this rectangle right in the middle of that field is what I want to leave, leave blank for doing some other tooling on um, in the front with initials. Um, so to do that uh, a friend of mine, Gary Arvidsson, came up with a really, really easy and simple idea. Um, you mark the area where you want the uh, basket weave not to go, and then you prepare a thin little piece of leather that's as big as that, and you prepare it by putting cement on the back. Gary used rubber cement, I've used EcoFlow water-based contact cement on the back here. Now contact cement, when you put it on both sides of the leather, will be permanent. But in this case, I've just got contact cement on the one piece of leather, and I let it get tacky for 3-4 hours now. So it is going to act pretty much like rubber cement. So I'm going to place it in position in that rectangle where I don't want to have the basket weave and my aim is to have the basket weave really flow all around this rectangle so it's going to be noisy but here we go I'm going to do it from one side and I follow Chan Gear's method of basket weave so I don't work on either side of one straight line Alright, so this row that I'm busy with now is going to miss that center por portion and the next row will be the one that does shows the magic starting. Right, next row, and I'm gonna, I'll show you as soon as I get to that square what happens. So, these impressions are straightforward. Now, now you'll see that part of that impression is gonna be on that square. So what I do here is the same as what I do on um, the edges. I tilt the tool. I don't know if you can see that too much from that angle, but the tool is quite tilted at this point so that most of the impression is in my on my field and just a little bit shows on there. I don't want to aggressively stamp this piece of leather. All that this leather is going to do is to show me where my impressions are supposed to be. So same here. So now, because I've got that faint impression there, I know exactly how to orientate this tool. So I do a impression there and I swing it over and I just mark it on this light piece of leather. So here. Next one, two, still lined up nicely. And I mark where that goes. And if you look very really carefully, you will see those two marks there that was left on the leather. Intense, uh, I intense uh, on purpose do that very softly because I don't want to bang that piece of leather with a semi-glued part quite into that my own leather. I don't want it sticking there permanently. So there's the first row. And I'll complete this row for later. I just want to show you first how this now flows around. Okay. So So 
that one just has a little tip on there but it's enough to allow me to just very faintly make the particularly the four corners of that tool so that I have my alignment There we go, and this tool again is going to go off onto where I want the real impressions, so. Okay, that one's done, let me. Okay, next row, yay. And my impressions are there, enough for me to orientate this tool. It's going to be some mark on the real leather and some on this dummy piece of leather that's here. For want of a better term, I've called this um, open area in the middle of the, of the field of basket weave. I've called that an island, kind of where, what it is. So I've got the island covered, and uh, there we go, and I simply proceed with every row of basket weave as I would have if that island wasn't there. Now I know there's all sorts of um, very ingenious ideas out there. If you follow the old Stolman way of doing basket weave, doing impressions on either side of a straight line going in one direction, um, that's fine. But since Chan Gear gave came up with this one, this method of doing it. Um, I will never go back to doing basket weave in any other way. This way is just simply too fail safe and easy. So, okay. And that's how I proceed with the whole thing. Um, I'm going to just pause here um, and we'll take it up. I'm going to do some more and then I'll show you what's left. So I've reached the end of the field, the end of the island, and um, just want to show you how things flow together when I have crossed that border. So. As you can see, I'm using the markings on that island piece of leather. And I'm positioning according to them. And there I am. I've cleared that island totally around it. Let me make one more row and then um, I'll pause again.
Okay, I'm just going to finish this field while the leather is nicely cased and then I'll start again videoing as I take off that iron piece. So this is only the second time I've done this method with a dummy piece of leather lying over that island um, and the previous time some of these impressions did come through uh, slightly but so let's see what this one does. Ah, very, very, very nice. Um, what you see there as white is where the where the um, glue on the back slightly stuck on the on the um, leather on the surface of the leather. So with tooling and with the um, putting dye and conditioner on, that's totally going to disappear. You can almost just describe that as dry spots in the leather um, that is not permanent surface. I've not decided what I'm going to do um, in this area um, but I think maybe just a very very plain um, wood finish might be nice um, yeah I think so so what I'm gonna do then, if I'm gonna do a wood grain or a, something like that, um, I am going to put a scallop border like I did with the other, with the front end. Let me see. Um, and as you know, I always test these things on the side. So, that's what this one looks like. Hmm. One of my first C41s. I think that looks good. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Ha. Big mistake. I have it the wrong way around. <laughs> Let's see what we can do about that. Thought so. Something looked funny. Okay, now to fix that mistakey. Aha, let's see how we're going to do that. So this guy has to be this way around. You know what? I think I can get away in this case with just over stamping it. Yeah, not too bad. And then. The wood grain. How am I going to do the wood grain? Let's see. Um, it's not part of covering the island, but I think this might be nice to put a wood grain in there. So I'm going to do this one by, uh, um, let's put it off center. Just put some nasty marks in the wood and then 
going to work from this side. I need a sharper. This guy is sharper. Sharper edge. Okay, and I'm not going to take it all the way to the edge, just kind of have it fade out. Turn this around, so I can do the other side. And it's starting to take shape. Quite nicely. recently saw a friend do something else that I thought was interesting and that is he or she can't remember put cross cracks in this wood now I don't want to do them too heavy here and there I'm hoping that they will come out more clearly once I put color on this. There, and I think that is done. But the main point was having those basket weave stamps perfectly line up, reaching the other side of the island. I hope that helped you amazingly. I have to do the border of this now before I can publish this video, but I hope it helped, and I hope you have fun. Take care. Bye-bye.